Welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses in New York, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. The screen is flickering. Okay. So um, I want to talk about what every real estate investor needs to know. And this is an interesting thought, because a lot of these things that came to me over the last year, and I've been thinking about them, I think they're significant. I haven't made a list, and I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I usually go around 10 minutes, so... Um, let me talk about the first few things you need to know. You need to know that this is a simple business. People think it's so complicated and so detailed. It's not. It's a simple business, but it's not easy. It's hard. Just saw the movie again that I really liked. Um, I forgot the name. Uh, I think about the girls' baseball team with Tom Hanks. Why can't I think of the name? Girls' baseball. Um, Tom Hanks, really women's issue, right? Not girls. Um, League of Their Own, right? So in League of Their Own, a League of Their Own, he says, uh, talking about baseball, someone says it's hard. He goes, it is hard. The hard is what makes it great. The truth is, it being hard means that everybody doesn't do it, right? It's hard. It's difficult. Um, but it's easy. I'm sorry, but it's simple, not easy. <laughs> I screwed that up. It's simple. What we do is we contact people who own homes who are likely to sell, and we ask them if they want to sell. And if they do want to sell, we either talk to them over the phone or in person, and then see if they have a problem that selling it at a discount can solve, whether we can help them or not. That's it. That's really the business. That's in a nutshell, the whole business, just acquisition. Now, once you have a property under contract and you get it under contract, then you can do a lot of things with it, right? You can wholesale the contract by assigning it to another, uh, somebody else who's going to do the rehab. You can close on it and wholetail it, which means you're just going to do minimal or no work to it and put it on the retail market. You can close on it and rehab it, do major work to it and sell it, you know, at a profit that way. So that's, that's it, right? And you need to know that it's difficult and that you're going to have to persevere, and that it takes time. It is not quick, right? What you see on the internet is people saying, oh, in three weeks I made $12,000, and this is great, and every three weeks I should make $100,000. That does happen occasionally, but it's very hard, and much harder in New York. So you need to know that this is a simple business, but a hard business. Another thing you need to know is that it's very difficult to grow this business if you don't have a team. So I have my team. I just hired two more people. I think I have eight people now working for me. Um, and that hiring is also hard, right? And this is something I came up with, and I'll probably do a video just on this topic, which I, I, I came up with it recently, and I think it's epiphany. I think it was an epiphany, and I think, it's, I think it's genius. When you hire somebody, you need to have two thoughts in your head that really are at odds with each other. But if you want to go through the hiring process, you need to think that both one, this may not be the right person, right? We all think, oh, well, I'm going to interview you and I'm, I use this great uh, employment website and I'm going to find the right person and the first time I hire somebody, I know it's going to be the right person. But the truth is it's not necessarily the case, right? And, I, and the first guy I hired actually is still working with me and he's great. But you have to understand that the person you hire may not work out and at the same time, you need to invest time to make sure that the people you hire are doing a good job. So that's hard in your brain, right? Because to take a 20 minutes or half hour a day to talk to the person who may or may not be the right person seems stupid, right? Because why am I wasting all my time on them? And that's what happens is that people don't have both those thoughts in their head. And then one of two things usually happens. Number one is they don't work out because for whatever reason, um, and you get rid of them and you've, let's say, invested a good amount of time in them. And then you feel like this is crazy. I don't want to hire anybody because I don't have the time to put into them. Or you don't put the time in and then they don't work out because they never really knew what they were supposed to be doing, right? These are mostly virtual workers on the other side of the planet. So you have to do both. And if you don't have both those ha thoughts in mind, you're going to be disappointed when it doesn't work out. And the truth is, it doesn't work out most of the time, right? We think, again, we all think, I'm going to interview you and this person sounds great, but you have to invest time to make them great, knowing on some level that they may not be great for this job. So there are certain tools 
personality assessments to see if they're good. I recommend them. One I really like is predictive index. Um, this is pretty superficial. Predictive index is a little better. So I think that I think that it's important that you have both those thoughts in your mind. You need to know that that a this person may not work out, but at the same time, I have to commit to making sure that they have everything they need so that they will work out. Okay, that is number. Second thing that real estate investors need to know. Third thing, and this is important, and people don't talk about this a lot. Oh, this reminds me, I got to talk to somebody told me. Um, is that real estate really is a commodity today. It wasn't a commodity 30 years ago, okay? 30 years ago, if you had the greatest investment property available, the only way you were going to let people know about it is a classified ad and a sign in front. It's very possible that Every person that would, would, would want that property would never see the classified ad or the sign in front. But today, with the internet, people are constantly looking for investment property or anything they can make money on. And the idea that certain properties are not good because they're in terrible shape or they're in terrible locations um, just doesn't hold water anymore. Certainly not in the New York area. Every property has a value. Everyone. It might be much less than you think, right? If you have a crappy piece of property, that's not like, I'm talking about buildable land or a house, right? Or a commercial property. They all have values, right? And what happens is, if you're listing something for sale and it's not selling, the only reason it's not selling is because your price is too high. Now you think, what, what does that mean? Maybe it's not selling because it's in crappy condition. No. There's somebody who will buy it in the crappiest of condition if the price is right. You'll think, well, maybe it's in a bad location. No. Regardless of location, there is a price for it. So this is why when sellers call me or other investors bring to me a deal that's listed for sale on the market, I, I, I say immediately, it's probably not a good deal for me. And then I get questions, why? And I say, well, if it's not selling at whatever it's listed at, the actual price value is probably significantly less than that. I can't even pay what its actual price is now. I have to buy it at a discount to make money. Right? I'm an investor. I have to buy properties at a discount to make a profit. I can't pay the current value. I have to pay less than the current value. And usually if it's listed at a price, the seller has that price in mind. And they think that's the actual price. Now, I know if it's not selling in today's market, it's not the actual price. And I can't even pay what the actual price is. So I'll give you an example. Someone called me with a house that was listed for $700,000. And I told her straight up, Listen, you don't need me. Just drop the price to five ninety nine. It's worth about six hundred thousand. She said no. There was an issue. I ended up buying it at four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then selling it immediately at five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. I didn't make one hundred twenty five thousand dollars profit, unfortunately, because in New York, the closing costs are incredible. My holding costs were crazy. Um, it's just how much it costs to buy and sell property in New York. So, my point is. If someone has something listed for seven hundred, my price may be four five four to five hundred four hundred fifty thousand dollars, like it was in that case. Most sellers cannot make that jump in their head, and it's important to understand that in today's market, real estate really, really is a commodity. It really is a commodity. There is a price for any property, right? Any land in our area has has value, right? Buildable land, now obviously the land isn't buildable. If it's a 20-foot wide piece of land, it's useless. But if it's buildable land um, or a, 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 an existing house, it has value, right? The land value with most of the parts of, of Long Island are at least one hundred and fifty to $200,000, right? So even if you're the worst house in the world, right, I'll buy it for a hundred grand, and I'll sell it to a builder for $150,000. I'll buy it. So as long as I can, as long as they can build a house on it. So... It's important to think that way. I never thought that way. I used to think, well, I, if the house had less than three bedrooms and two bathrooms, I didn't want to be, I wasn't interested in it. I was a moron, right? I probably passed on a dozen properties that I could have bought and made money on. Eventually, I figured out, you're not going to live in it. And the things you like and the location you like is irrelevant. What you like is irrelevant. If you can comp out the property, that means you can find other comparable sales and get a value for it. There's no reason for you not to make an offer on it and to make money on it. I think that's it for today. I could probably talk for seven hours about what real estate investors need to know, but those are things that I find people don't know and that they should know. 
So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. I have a podcast now with my the friend, the great Greg Helbeck, called New York Real Estate Investing. You can get it on iTunes or Stitcher. And if you're interested in finding out more about a course I have that teaches how to do what I do, go to howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. If you are interested in finding out more about one-on-one coaching, go to how, coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in, that's about it, I think, for interested. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. And if you're watching on any um, uh, media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help. And keep, keep the comments coming. Um, I go live five times a week. I don't always know what to say, so your comments help me with topics. If you can ask a comment about anything, it doesn't even have to be about the video you're watching. Um, if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it is something that I've covered before, I'll send you links to a video or videos on it. And if it's something new, I will do a new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.